be over because death's knocking at your door. Welcome to Resist Supercut, episodes of Resist 1 through 15. The videos in this series are, um, they're not very good, but you're gonna watch them anyway, fuck you. The 8-bit song is by Frank Chav C. The 16-bit head is by Dominic Rabarin. Links are right there on the video where you can see them, so shut the fuck up about it already. Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to tell you to do one thing, and one thing only, resist capitalism. So yesterday, my dad drove me to Starbucks so I could get a coffee. And I was checking my phone, looking at my Tumblr, looking at my Twitter, and I saw the man, via capitalism, was fucking me! So I googled Marxism, and it turns out, he was right on a whole bunch of stuff. And now I know exactly how the world works, and I need to tell you how to work it, how to fix it, and how it's gonna be done. You're so dumb, how do you not know all of this stuff already? I mean, pick up a book, man. But like, a book that backs up what I say, not a book that says a different thing other than what I say. That's why I favor government systems that foster social homogenousness. Because points of view other than mine trigger me! Everyone being on the same page as me is for the betterment of society. Please believe me. Please? I'm an expert. If I weren't, would I have 300 Twitter followers? Would I have this degree I overpaid for? that I'm gonna be paying for until I'm 45 through my student loans? All you childish shitlords need to realize I'm the adult here. That's why I need a government system that babies me from cradle to grave. Please fix all my problems. Make my life choices easy for me. Alleviate me of all my student debt. I was forced to go to college by corporations at gunpoint, man. And my solution is to make government bigger and make the college system that fucked me and left me ill-prepared for the job market open and free to everyone. Because I have no skills other than telling you I'm right on the internet. And I'm not even good at that. Resist capitalism, baby! <laughs> Gotta keep it up. Keep up that energy. Energy is the key to resistance. Keep resisting capitalism, baby! So I was driving around this morning in my mom's Hyundai Sonata, handing out photocopies of my gender studies degree to potential employers. Starbucks, Barnes and Noble, that's where I buy all my Marx books. When all of a sudden, I was instead by the capitalist system. In order to move forward, I had to put gasoline in the car. Good thing I had five spare dollars in my pocket from selling homemade Bernie Sanders bumper stickers on my Etsy account. I sold another one, Mom! That's the fifth one this week! Thankfully, gas prices are low right now because Saudi Arabia is filling the market with cheap crude. But let's face it, the prices are low because the corporate fat cats don't want us to revolt! It couldn't possibly be the basics of economic competition at work. Marx debunked competition years ago! We need to fight the oil companies, y'all. It's their fault they're so powerful. I mean, it's not like governments around the world support them through loans, subsidies, and regulatory favoritism. I'm 100% sure that heavily taxing these companies I'm too stupid to realize we prop up will fix the issue of income inequality. It's not like our benevolent political class will just find another way to fuck us. Keep resisting capitalism, baby! Always resist. Never give up. Always resist. Still resist capitalism, baby! So yesterday, I was hanging in my parents' basement because my dad turned my room into a home office after I spent six years going to college because I changed my major four times. Dad, have you said the loan payment yet? Which is fine. I don't like exposure to the sunlight. Doing so would be exploiting the sun. And I don't want to do that because I'm not a corporate fat cop. I was browsing the internet with my expensive computer tablet assembled by poor people in another country while wearing my this is what a feminist looks like t-shirt sewn together by poor people in another country. And sitting on my Ikea rocking chair assembled by my dad. I'm not good with my hands. And I was using my social media accounts to educate people how capitalism is fucking them! And then someone with white privilege tried to illustrate to me the irony of participating in a capitalist system that I'm simultaneously fighting. I'm no hypocrite. The rules of hypocrisy don't apply here. Marxism debunked hypocrisy years ago. Read a book, man. A book Marx wrote, not another book, not a book by someone else! Trust me, I'm an expert. I know everything about Marx, even though I'm completely ignorant to macroeconomics and the hundred years of economic theory that came after the release of Das Kapital. Chicago School Who? I am an agent of change, just bringing about the fall of the capitalist system using the capitalist system. 
That's how I think these things work. Never mind the fact that the government-run economy that I'm advocating for will have no use for me because I'm a skillless idiot. But I'm pretty sure they're gonna pay me to be an artist. Resist capitalism, baby! Can't give up. Too many things to resist. Resist sizeism, baby! As it turns out, no one wants to pay me to be a gender studies major, so I've decided to broaden my horizons and go back to school. So I'm gonna get in on the ground floor of the next big social movement in this country, that acceptance, by going back to school and pursuing that studies. It's a real thing! My government loan is on the way, and while I wait, I've been going on Tumblr and brushing up on body positivity so I can ace my classes! You can be healthy at any size, 160 pounds or 660 pounds. There's literally no difference between the two in terms of health or quality of life. The science proves it. And the financial strain obesity puts on our healthcare system is a myth. The science proves it! Marx debunked type 2 diabetes years ago! Did you know the mass media and the diet industry puts images in your head via mind control to make you think that morbid obesity is unattractive? That's problematic! And if you don't sleep with someone because they're 900 pounds, that's oppression. And diets do not work. The science proves it. And whatever weight you've lost will eventually pile back on. Because weight is genetic. As evidenced by all the 600 pound people who were around during ancient civilizations. Ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, Mesopotamia, and the Mayans. Pro-thin, anti-fat historians just want you to think they didn't exist. I've decided I'm gonna stop dieting. Stop lying to my body. I'm gonna try intuitive eating. Whatever my body and mind says I should eat, and however much I should eat, I will eat. If my mind says I want a bucket of chicken, I'm gonna eat a bucket of chicken. It's not like the junk food Americans love is lacking in actual nutrients and is also packed with fat, salt, and sugar, triggering hunger mechanisms in the head and stomach, and that the general population is too fucking stupid to understand basic nutrition. Keep resistance sizeism, baby! People keep asking me, why are you always jumping around in your videos? Why are you so active? I'm an activist. Duh. Keep resistant employment, baby! So I was feeling particularly brave the other day and went to look in the comments of one of my last videos. And someone said the reason I was poor was because I was lazy and refused to pick myself up by my bootstraps and get a job! First off, if my mom would buy me boots, they would not have straps. And also, that statement is sexist, it's racist, it's genderist, classist, speciesist, Ableist, it's elitist, it's ageist, and it's also existist, as it discriminates against people who have died. Not a reason to exclude individuals from the job force. Do you know how many millions of people can't strap up their boots due to our current systems of oppression? Me being white and raised in the suburbs by parents who both make more than $100,000 a year. My theory doesn't exactly explain why I turned out to be such a loser, as I would have no face-to-face -face experience with such systems. But I'll continue to use this argument when convenient, because it's easier than learning a skill or coming to terms with how mediocre of a human being I am. Keep resistant employment, baby! You know, there was a point when I was definitely feeling the burn, but now, I'm voting for Hillary, baby! I don't know if you know this, but we're less than a year away from a game-changing election in this country. So I decided to brush up on the issues by watching the Democratic debate on my parents' brand new HDTV. Mom! Can you make me some bagel bites? Intuitive eating. Now I've been doing my best to fight the capitalist system by supporting Bernie Sanders. You gotta love his platform. Free college, free healthcare, free Wi-Fi. But I've decided there are more important issues at stake here, which is why I'm casting my vote for Hillary in 2016. Now I know Hillary is beholden to the corporate fat cats, but hear out my reasoning here. Vagina. As much as I love Bernie, his penis makes it really hard to vote for him. Hillary might be a part of our greedy, ineffective political class, but my childish understanding of fairness and equality has me leaning towards her. The fact of the matter is, she has a uterus, and that's gonna come in handy when it comes time to run this country. Uteruses make you jump faster, run higher, and think gooder. And don't forget, she could dab like a mother. Like a middle-aged mother of one. Marx was hitting the dab years ago! Women are facing a lot of problems in this country that only a woman can fix. And Hillary is gonna do it. Just like how when Barack Obama was elected president, all of the problems black people were facing suddenly just vaporized into the ether. So in 2016, I'm saying, no Obama. Get him out of here. Nix the dicks and try the vagina. Hillary! 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 Vote for Hillary, baby! It doesn't matter if you're black or white. Resist 
colorism, baby! As many of you know, I've been going back to school to get my PhD in fat studies. For homework, we have to eat 10 of these Stouffer's Fettuccine Alfredo frozen dinners and a quart and a half of Friendly's Royal Banana Split Ice Cream. Intuitive eating. So in order to get my degree, I had to take an anthropology elective. And in one of my first classes, I learned something amazing about all of us. We are all from Africa. Home. So I've decided to get back in touch with my African roots, decolonize my mind, and undergo a series of very expensive repigmentation procedures. I've spent about $4,000 so far. Let me show you the results. Right, right there, that, or is it there? No, it's, it's right there. What, you can't see it? You can't, it's, it's right there. My doctor tells me I'm now officially 199th black. I'm feeling more diverse as a person already. And now that I'm transracial, I'm gonna need support from my brothers and sisters going through the same struggle as me! I feel for you, bro. I feel for you. Deep down, we know what race we really are. I think I'm in love. Who are you to deny the racial identity of this beautiful Nubian princess? This stunning and brave Nigerian queen! Twitter tells me she is not black, though. Now, I'm not one to deny somebody their racial identity, but if black people have an opening, I'd like to apply. If someone black is watching this video, put in a good word for me, please. I'll owe you one. RESIST COLORISM, BABY! I'm on my 20th tortilla today. Do what I'm eating. Keep resisting harassment, BABY! Hey guys, I don't know if you know this, but the comment section down there is becoming a scary place. Imagine you're me. You go on YouTube.net yesterday, you go and look at people reacting to your videos, and I see hundreds upon hundreds of responses that are not in total agreement with what I'm saying. Basically, harassment. And it can't be free speech because it's harassment. And harassment is not free speech. Don't believe me? Listen to this chant. Harassment isn't free speech. Harassment isn't free speech. You can't chant something that's not the truth. There are people down in the comments talking about economic theories Marx debunked years ago. I'm trying to educate you, and how do you think? With my own disagreement? I don't have to take this online bullying anymore. And a lot of you are gonna be seeing a knock on your door from the web sheriff real soon. Why are you guys denying my human rights? Like my right to say my opinion without anyone disagreeing with me. And my right to have other people listen to what I have to say. My right to not have my beliefs challenged or be made to feel uncomfortable. It's right there in the constitution. I'm just trying to make America great again. If we let this cyber harassment go unchecked, what's next? Cyber violence? Cyber shootings? Cyber stabbings? Cyber sex? Cyber pregnancy? Keep resisting harassment, baby! It's what's on the inside that matters, not the outside. Keep resisting sizes, baby! I am burning with anger right now, and it's because my parents are sizes scumbags who don't believe in the power of intuitive eating. Intuitive eating. Imagine you're me. You're sitting in your parents' kitchen, updating your flat earth blog. We know the truth, bro. We know the truth! And you've intuitively eaten your sixth Hershey bar for the day. When all of a sudden, my pet chihuahua, Che, short for Che Guevara, he's my hero, he just came right up to me and started begging for a piece. Now listen, I'm not one for sharing. After all, Marx debunked sharing years ago. I believe the system should provide Che with his own piece of chocolate if he wants a piece of chocolate. But I was feeling particularly body positive that day and decided to give him a whole bar. Why should my dog feel fat and ashamed for gorging himself on junk food and candy? Riots, not diets. Riots, not diets. So I come back in the room five minutes later and he's violently vomiting and writhing all over the floor. Jay, how did this happen? He was eating intuitively. He was following his intuition. Where did I go wrong? And the worst part of it is, is I had to put money in the pockets of the corporate fat cats to drive him to the vet. And now my parents say I'm not allowed to eat intuitively for a whole month. Freedom! 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 Riots, not diets! Riots, not diets! Game resistance, sexism, baby! I told you guys before, and I'll say it again. You gotta nix the dicks and try the China. Keep your face Hillary, baby! From the, uh, capitalist media, that is. I just wanna say, I've been feeling real good lately. And I think it's because I'm really sticking to my diet. Mm.
Intuitive eating. My parents aren't supposed to know I'm still intuitive eating. So I was going online yesterday, fighting oppression the only way millennials know how! By reading articles! Just like my hero! He reads articles every day! Basically, I was looking for ways to justify my shallow endorsement of Hillary's vagina in the 2016 a presidential election! When all of a sudden, I found irrefutable proof that the capitalist fat cat media's coverage of Hillary Clinton has been rapidly sexist. The way that Hillary Clinton's been talked about in the media is so gendered and rapidly sexist in every single portrayal. The adjectives, whether it's the attacks on her personal life or the adjectives that are used to describe her clothing, we have to do a full re-examination. Like, I literally want to make a list that we hand to media outlets that says, like, these are the words you can't use when describing a female candidate. Shrill, inaccessible, difficult, frumpy, plastic. I hope you guys were listening to that because this ugly little boy makes a good point. All these criticisms people make of my favorite candidate are gendered attacks on her womanhood. And this young man that God saw fit to hit so hard with the ugly stick, I would like to add to his list of things the media cannot say about Hillary. She's a liar. She's corrupt. Slaves just silent in Benghazi. Emails, emails, emails. Money from Goldman Sachs. She's a flip-flopper on gay marriage. She doesn't really give a shit about Black Lives Matter. She's completely out of touch with racial struggles and the middle class. She's inauthentic, patronizing. She avoids the media. She's generic. She's bland and sounds really rehearsed when she talks. And she is totally the status quo. Where are we gonna stop all these gendered attacks? These critiques would never be made to a male candidate. Male candidates are never hated, never critiqued, never brought into question, and never attacked. That's just the sexist system we live in. As a community of progressive, like-minded individuals, we need to band together and keep people from attacking the hill dog. <laughs> Defend Hillary, baby! <laughs> Give it to the capitalism, baby! Hey guys, I've been having a really bad couple of days. Sorry it's been a while since we powwowed. I shouldn't say that. That would be cultural appropriation. My parents! Capitalist scum saw fit to take away my iPad! They said they were gonna have to bought it to make my next college loan payment! My iPad is basically the reason I'm alive right now, and my parents took it away! And to make matters worse, my parents said that if I don't get a job, they're gonna kick me out! Why can't you guys be more understanding? First off, my gender studies degree has left me with very few career options. And it's gonna take seven more years for me to complete my fat studies degree. And now that I've been undergoing repigmentation, employers are discriminating against me because I'm not white! You can see the progress right there. Right there! And I'm currently struggling with several eating disorders, all of which I diagnosed myself. Marx debunked doctors years ago! But I'm currently on the long road to healing, thanks to intuitive eating. This Chick-fil-A diet sounds good. It's not like only a fucking moron would do this or write about this. And also, job? I have a job. I sell self-drawn Sharpie portraits of Hillary Clinton for $50 a pop on my Etsy account. But my mom and dad said it's not really a job until I sell one. Please buy this. And then, when they were leaving the room, my mom and dad said I'm just one of a generation of corpulent, narcissistic, ineffectual parasites. But now that I don't have my iPad, I can't look up what those words mean. Keep resistant definitions, baby! <laughs> Keep resistant comedy, baby! So yesterday, I was on YouTube, which is super brave of me because just going on the site increases my chances of getting triggered. Ah! It only took me a few minutes to stumble upon a comedy video where a white guy was trying to be funny. Th this ought to be rich. This ought to be rich over here. This ought to be rich. He ought to be rich because of the wage gap. Privilege. I read those articles. It only took this cis-het white piece of garbage five seconds to tell an offensive joke. I'll repeat it here. But trigger warning! Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Ah! God damn it! That joke is clearly cannibalist! Not to mention all the eating disorder relapses it probably caused! I gotta go, I'll be right back! Intuitive eating. So then, 
I want to sign it over the video saying, no platform this guy. And then I got a response to me. I'm being PC. You are being too PC. Stop being such a PC bitch, homo. First off, that comment was homophobic and I'm asexual spectrum. Sometimes I'm gray sexual, sometimes I'm lithosexual. And political correctness isn't ruining comedy, it's saving comedy. Don't believe me? Listen to this chant. PC is saving comedy. PC is saving comedy. By having less to work with, Comedy can say so much more! And think of all the great comedians out there that got rich and famous by desperately trying to please and appeal to everyone! And besides, I like it when performers are unreasonably worried about offending me. It makes me feel important, and it's certainly a nice contrast from the suicidal thoughts that are usually in my head! Ooh, that was edgy. Thankfully, I have intuitive eating to fill the void and keep the bad thoughts at bay! Keep us as a comedy library! <laughs> Why is my hat stuck? We're gonna Super Bowl, baby! This past Sunday, I was doing what I do every Sunday, participating in socially just hashtag decolonize your mind. And all of a sudden, on Twitter, supposedly a safe space, I stumbled upon a hotbed of toxic masculinity. Hashtag SB50. Secret MRA hot neck beard. Sexual object misogyny. Ooh, Beyonce. Apparently it's some kind of game where a bunch of muscly men get together to throw around a super ball. I will give them one thing. It looks like they do a lot of intuitive eating. But the worst thing about this sport is that it reinforces the worst elements of male behavior. You've taught me so well. Teamwork. <laughs> Nothing worse than a bunch of men working together, cooperating to achieve a common goal. That can only lead to one thing. The cologne attacks. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Don't look this up. Don't look this up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Another example. Work ethic. <laughs> Disgusting. 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 Hand me a baseball bat and give me the legal ability to break the right leg of every man in America and I'll close the wage gap tomorrow. It's clobbering time. Competition. Competition. What is this? The free market? What's the point of trying to be good at something if it's only going to make you better and successful? The, 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 the marks debunk success. Turn down your volume. Turn it down. Yeah! I told you. I fucking told you. Excelling at something is only going to hurt other people's feelings. And we don't want that. That's basically hate speech. Because hate speech is whatever I want it to be. Here's where I call you guys in. I need you to hashtag boycott the Super Bowl. What? Last week, it's not happening again. There's one a year. Change your plans. Hashtag boycott the next Super Bowl. Boycott the Super Bowl, baby! <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Read your countless comments, baby! These videos are gold. Are you kidding me right now, bro? Kidding me, bro? You better be joking, bro. Are you kidding me, bro? Did you seriously just reference the gold, gold standard? Mox debunked the gold standard! I, I, I'm having a hard time pinpointing exactly when that happened. Yes. Yeah. I'm reading books. It says it here. I'm learning. This is a book. Bunch of cabbage. It's right here! It says, Marx debunked the gold standard. Yeah! So I spent this past weekend educating myself. Try it sometime, you shit low man, baby. <laughs> I was checking my privilege by watching lots of videos from Lacey Green and BuzzFeed. I can't afford any extra gender studies courses right now. I'm $50,000 in debt. Buy my Hillary drawing. If only there were a presidential candidate offering free college. With a vagina. Then I could vote for her. But all of a sudden, BuzzFeed hit me with a dose of reality. How does it feel to be the same sex as Donald Trump? You gotta give it to BuzzFeed. They're always asking the questions that keep me awake at night. Why haven't I spoken about Trump in my videos yet? Well, as a person of no color, it would be racist to disagree with a person of color. Orange is a color. Orange lives matter. I don't want to be male if Trump is male. I'm gonna change my gender. Get out of this sexist, patriarchal, disgusting, oppressive, violent. Gender binary right now, which is why from now on you will refer to me as a gent, a real gent, a true gent. Gender expression that is not Trump associated. That way, I don't gotta worry about being the same gender as Trump. 
Cause, cause that's important for some reason. Who's gonna tell us what made me? The presentation features capital letters. So it might be harmful to anyone avoiding that. <laughs> Yesterday morning, online, trying to defend women from cyber violence. The internet will kill you. And all of a sudden, I was hit with the sudden urge, the need, the necessity to check my privilege. It was a privilege I'd never checked before. Human privilege. There are human women being mercilessly harassed on the internet. But who's gonna fight for the voices of virtual women? Where do I even start? I know what my hero would do. He would read an article. So I read this one. Wait, I don't think this is relevant to the... I read this one. E Evan Vert. To ass sex you Turns out there's a woman living in my phone and misogynist MRA neck beer sexist patriarchal woman haters are constantly sexually harassing her and it's I and I alone who will valiantly stand against this injustice to virtual women get the fuck away from me you human man scum huh you heard me shit lord take your male gaze off of me Okay. And stop holding me like an object. It is objectifying. I can do that. Give me a mason jar of water. Can robots drink water? You virtualizer. I am human kin. Give me water. Are you sure? Give me water. I'm respecting your identity. I'm respecting your identity. I'm respecting your identity. Yum. Yum. Delicious water. water, 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 water. <laughs> 